Hello and welcome back to another video. This guide will basically be for any talisman that is in the rift, is from the rift, or is for the rift. So basically anything related to the rift has to do with accessories. Now there'll be timestamps for every single accessory in the description, or you just scroll and see them. Now if you just need a few specific ones that you don't know how to get, just go to the timestamps in the description. First is the crux talismans. You first get that by killing the Shies in the Wild Woods here. Now when it says eek and makes that sound, you want to look away from it or it will damage you. Let me kill one while looking at it so it does damage me. I look at it. Uh, you see I, I lost 60 seconds there. You do not want to look at it. That is no good. So you just grab, I, th I believe, eight of these. And now, since I have a lot of Crux Fortune, I'm getting like two each time. But you'll probably only be getting one. And here we are. In the craft a Crux Talisman. Now the next upgrade to this is going to be the Crux Ring. Which... First, you want to go through to the Black Lagoon, which you have to talk to Sirius and do his quest if you haven't already, which you can find him at the back of the Dark Auction. Next, go through the West Village, which I think you need the Supreme Time Charm from doing the Leech Boss fight and some other stuff. Now, in the West Village, you want to look for something that looks like this. Once it goes on the ground, you just want to run. Just run. Uh, you'll see the little footsteps of it. You just don't want to get hit. And if it hits you while it's on the ground, it takes away a lot of time. And it should drop you some Shadow Cruxes. With these Shadow Cruxes, you can put your Crux Talisman surrounded by 16 of these. And you get your Crux Ring. Next, you want to head over to the Dread Farm, which... If you have unlocked the West Village, you've unlocked the Dread Farm. You want to look at the vaults. Sit these. And you want to go to the safe spot. Over here. And here. Once you do that three times, you're able to hit it. Now a skip that you can deal with these if you just want to hit it. Once it starts doing that, just run away. And it does no damage to you. You can just wait. And maybe even start killing some other ones. But I want to do it three times. There, you just skip that little phase of it. Now, once you get 16 of these, you can make the Crux Artifact. Now to get the Relic, you'll need to go to the Village Plaza. I think requires the Mirrorverse Time Charm. Now on the Plaza, you'll find something called Scribes. I'm gonna hit it. Then I'll go up into the air and I'll have this little laser and I'll put down a little uh, symbol. You want to avoid the laser and walk on the symbol here. And then it'll come down and you can finish it off. Now you got the scribe crux. Now 16 of these. You can turn your crux artifact into the crux relic. Next you want to go through Deja Vu Alley. Which, if it's green, you can go. If it's yellow, you should stop. If it's red, don't move. You'll get kicked back there and lose some time. I think you need a Skyblock Citizen Time Charm from Barry. Now, if you go down here, which also requires full living metal armor, which if you don't know how to get, I'll play a clip from my old video where I show you how to get living metal armor. Skip to here if you don't need to know how to get living metal armor. And I'll show you a quick example of how you get living metal armor. You want to start mining the, the lapis with your pickaxe once you get it. And once you do that, you get living metal. Like, you want to craft this how you craft armor, and then you can spawn the armor in. And once you 
fill it. Or sometimes they'll have certain abilities that make them summon diamond blocks and you just have to mine those. Once you kill it, it will drop its boots or whatever armor piece. You want to click that and you should get a percentage of living metal in it. You want to do this with all pieces until it's 100%. Like it said in the chat, mine are already fully juiced, so I'm good to go. Now once you have your little living metal armor, you should be able to go down here without dying. And you'll find the thing called Troll Isle. Hit it. Ah! Hit it. And... It will go into this little ice box, which you gotta... Use your weapon to break it. And you should be able to get Frosty Drugs. Now, if you don't break the ice in time, you lose a lot of time. Let's get 24 of these frosting trucks. Makes the trucks here low. And then you're good to go. To the next part. Next part requires you to have a rift boat. You go through the barrier story. And you have to do this parkour. <laughs> oh. Or. Or not. Well, I've already done this parkour, so I can just skip it. Do this guy, skip. I'm pretty sure you can also skip the parkour if you pay like 100,000 votes if it's your first time. Then you talk to the deer. I need the rift boat in my inventory. Uh, now over here. And now the last upgrade to get the Chronomicon is the splatters. Now splatters are a little confusing, you want to hit it. It will slaughter your hearts. You want to grab your hearts back. I know I have 15 hearts, but it doesn't really matter how many hearts you have. It'll take just a percent of your hearts. And if you don't grab your hearts, let's say if I lose all my hearts here. See, and you get jailed. Which, to escape, you just walk out, kill some guards. Experience some lag. <laughs> and you are good to go. Once you get 32 splatter cruxes, you make it into the mythic version, and you finish that talisman. Each enemy has four levels, which maxes at 100, and you get five rift time and five crux fortune each level you get. So if you truly want to max out that talisman, you gotta kill a lot of things. It's in the wild woods, you just want to go to the screen pad here, jump up, right up here. Want to talk to Agrafi uh, Bugs Hopper? Now this won't be unlocked right away. I think you might have to do with the Bug Hunter's quest a little bit to unlock it. I could be wrong on that, but I did this a while ago. You need a bottle of Adonada and 2,000 milks. How do you get? The bottled Adonana. Well, first, you need Larva Hook, which you get from Shy Praxis. Once you get six Shy Praxis, you can buy a Larva Hook. With that Larva Hook, you want to find these little things. These are Larva, you want to hit them three times, and you'll get a Larva Silk. You want to do that twice. Let's find another one. They are all around the trees. There's one down there. You want to buy a empty Adonana bottle. Now you want to talk to this guy and the end of his quest should give you the silk wire stick. And now, in between the trees, you should see some little flying bugs like that. That's with Adonada. You want to click one of your strings right here. We'll place another string at the end of it. You want to click with the silk wire stick and you can click the move forward. And then you want to fold out your bottle and you want to stare at it. When you stare at it for a second, you should bottle it, and there it is, inside of the bottle. Go back up here, and now go back to the NPC, and you can purchase this for 2,000 moats and a bottle on an auto. The next talisman that I'm going to show you how to get is the Detective Monitor. At the end of the Black Lagoon, when you were first entering the West Village, you can turn up here, and 
pretty sure this isn't part of the village plaza, but you can talk to Unsin Tsun, and he'll give you a visor. What do you put on that visor? And you can see these little wires. These wires will not be rainbow colored. At first, they will be gray, and you have to turn them rainbow. The same colors, other same order of the rainbow as his skin. So red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple, pink. So if you follow the wires, you'll find these little computers, and I'll give you the cords for every single color of the computers. Now I'm just voicing over this footage, but basically what you want to do is the numbers at the top. You want to click a row whenever that number shows up, and once you do that. You finish the terminal, I hope that makes sense. And now, once it's had, we can pick a color. Now this one right here has to be red. This one right here has to be orange. This one right here has to be yellow. This one right here has to be green. This one right here has to be aqua. This one right here has to be blue. This one right here has to be purple. And finally, this one right here has to be pink. Now once you've done all that, you can head back to Miniclude. And he will give you... And he'll give you the detective monitor, and, and and in case you lose it, you can just buy it back for a thousand modes, but I have mine right here. But this one will be a little hard to explain, as I've already gotten it, but there will be a wizard right here. And you'll be defending a fireball. And what he needs you to do, is he needs you to find a bunch of glyphs around the West Village to protect this house from the fireball. Now, as you talk to them, they'll tell you to find glyphs in certain locations, and I'm gonna give you all the locations. The first location is right here. There should be a little chest, and you'll find your first glyph. And the way you activate the glyphs is they'll show up with little particles right in front of the house, and what you want to do is trace the particles without looking away. I'll show a clip of some random live stream that I find doing it right now. Next, you want to go into the windmill here, and it should be right here. The third glyph, you just want to walk over here. And I believe it's like the third glyph, I am pretty sure it's right here or right here. Now, the fourth glyph is either right here or here. Forgot. The fifth glyph is near the, uh, in the house with the hot dog contest. He's so right under the stairs here. For the seventh glyph, you want to eat some cake. Should be right here, if I recall correctly. And now the eighth and final glyph with mini clone up right on this desk. And now once you have done all the glyphs and you have traced all of them, the wizard should be down here, and he will give you a wandering trinket. Now the next one requires you to have the plaza to talk to Detective Amol. Among us, he will give you the detective scanner. With this, you basically sniff a bunch of clues around here. They will have green particles. And after that, you'll talk to the detective Amal. Detective Amal will tell you to go to the flower shop. Now, you and Among would be here with the florist. Talk to the florist. And then. After that, you guys head to the Colosseum. Now there will be an NPC right here. Basically, what he'll say is, Hey, I'm not the murderer. Uh, but he'll need you to buy a tactician's murder weapon, which you get from a leech sword and 500 moats. If you don't have a leech sword, go to the leech boss fight and do that. Once you give him the sword, you want to head over to the Deja Vu Alley and have head over to the Blacksmith. Of course, don't move when it's red. So, you want to talk to the Blacksmith here. Basically, you and Among decide to go back to the original house and sniff out some more clues. 
Next, you head back to the house, you reset the painting, talk to a mall, and then you guys decide to head to the tailor shop. Talk to Taylor, which I think is down here. And then you notice that you have to go back to this house. Now this house will be barricaded up. You just break down the wall, and then you'll see Romero. And now it turns out, this is of our first murder. You're the murderer. I know, it's confusing, it's the rift. Kill Romero. Now after you murder him, you'll talk to a model for a little bit. And then a menu should open. That gives you the Ring of Broken Love. For this next talisman, you'll need two items. Or one of these items. You need the Sulf, Recluse Pickaxe, and the Frozen Water Fungi. Now to get the pickaxe, you just want to kill these auto gnolls. Kill some blocks. Just destroy them. Kill or not. Kill it. We'll drop nullified metal to add these with wild burberries, a murder weapon, or a leap sword, and you'll get yourself a pickaxe. Now to get the frozen water fungi, what you need to do is go down here and mine some of this frozen water. Now if you skip the previous section and you don't know how to get down here, go to this time scam, it will explain how to get down here without dying. You want to mine some of this. A nullified metal with 16 uh, frozen water and all the other blocks. And you get a frozen water fungi. So you'll get one person to use the calming thing to calm it. And then you will mine. And as you mine the snake, you just get the other person to call it. And you will get a living metal heart. Now, if you don't have friends or you don't have anyone in your lobby to do it, what you can do, it's more challenging, would we call it, swap to this mine one block, comment again, and swap to it mine one block, comment, swap to it mine one block. Basically do that as long as the music particles still exist, it will be calm, but yeah, it it, it gets away pretty easily, so it, it's much easier if you just do it with one other player. Now, how does this help with the Bluetooth ring? Well, if you look in middle in Living Metal Heart Collection, once you get 60, you can make a Bluetooth ring, which requires 32 of the Living Metal Heart to make the Bluetooth ring, and you have got yourself another talisman. And this talisman is pretty useful because monsters will take one less thrift time if there's at least another player within 50 blocks. Which is pretty useful, considering some of the monsters later on do like 7 seconds uh, damage. Now the next talisman requires you to do a little bit of cross-dimensional traveling. From this cow over here, he gives you a wand of farming, and with that, you want to farm mushrooms. Now to farm the mushrooms, you can't just farm them. If you try and farm them, they'll knock you back. What you want to do is you want to stare at them, until they turn red, which they'll do. We're gonna quickly grab it. Now they go pretty quick, I'll show you. Like in like half a second. And you'll get a Agaricus cap. And in their collection, in their final collection, which requires you to get 200 of these, even I don't have it. You, you, you combine eight of these with a plumber's bucket. And you can get a chum cap. And you get the plumber's bucket from Slumber Gel. Just a thousand moats. And once you craft eight of those, and once you craft those, you want to go behind the dark auction. You'll see an ender chest. And you'll put it in that ender chest. And in the real world, there will also be an ender chest behind the dark auction. And your items will be cross transferred to the real world. Now let's cut to the real world. Now with eight of the chum caps, you add that to an empty chum bucket, and you get eight chum cap buckets. Now with the chum cap bucket, you just want to place it down, get your fishing armor on, hope that no one fills up your chum bucket, because if someone fills up your chum bucket, it reverts back to a normal chum bucket, and you basically lost it. Now this bucket here allows you to fish up the sea creature, the agari move. Oh, but now I got it. It's a little mushroom cow here. Wanna kill that? 
Uh, from what I've seen, it drops 3 to 12. I've heard some people say it drops 15. But with this Agari Mutala, 9 of them creates an Agari Mutalisman. A Talisman with 96 of them creates the ring. And the ring with 512 of them makes the artifact. Now, I know this really isn't part of the Rift, but it comes... But the start of the recipe comes from the Rift, and in this video, I am covering everything using the Rift Talismans, like I said. Now, the next few accessories that I'm going to be talking about are all part of the Mirrorverse. Which, if you don't know how to unlock, you basically want to do Cat's Quest here, where she gives you a vacuum. Which, I'm gonna hold in my inventory, so be a delink could be another one. And, you want to, uh, uh, basically, you have to do all of these. And at the fourth one, you unlock the ability to get the key to the infested house sold. Once you get that key, you want to go over here. And now you are in the Mirrorverse. Now, the first room doesn't have any talismans in it. You just want to click the levers, walk through, go down. Second room also doesn't have any talismans in it. Unfortunately, you just want to go through the lava and just look at the other side. Now, you can always just exit the room and talk to the NPC and go to where you want. Now, I'm going to skip it to the upside down part four. And what you want to do is you want to turn hard mode on. And now I have a mod that is highlighting all of the correct bases to go. But you can also just remember it by looking at the ceiling there. Now what hard mode does is it basically makes it so the blocks that you are standing on fall. If you stand on them for too long. Or break, they'll break which they usually don't break. And if you've hit the lava, instead of getting bounced up like three times or something, you just instantly fall. And the mod that I am using to do the highlights is SBE, but I'm sure there will be free mods that will do the highlights in the future. Or you can literally just remember the root it by looking up at the ceiling and practicing it a few times on normal mode. And in this chest, you should get the test bucket, so you ignore it, which you can transfer to the real world, and it should look like this in the real world. And of course, you just do that by using the ender chest at the back of the dark auction. Now, the second puzzle, I'll just run you through it. Basically, when I get... You have two mirrors here. You use one of yourself to do one thing and your other to do another. Basically, I'll quickly run you guys through the early levels, even though it, you only really need to do the last level for the talisman. But I'm assuming if you're watching this and you need to do this part, don't know if I do the earlier part. Where are we here? Alright. From a little confusing, get your guide here. Switch to here. Press this button. Send on this pressure plate with that guy. Press that button. Switch so that guy doesn't go off the pressure plate. Go up. Go here. This guy's on the pressure plate. Switch to this guy. And then this door is open. Now, you can't just go to the next room. But, you're here for the talisman. You need to get that talisman. So, to get the talisman, first, stand right here. Click this. Go up here. Press the lever. My door will open. When I click this, Go up to the door. Go stand on this pressure plate. Go switch to this. Change to this guy. Click this button. Run back. 
over here. Now the button right here, which we we'll press and then change. You go up here, you stand on this pressure plate, and the door opens, and you should be able to claim your big brain talisman. This next area is really hard. Basically, a little dance game. The move, just do what these little blocks tell you. Sneak, stand, sneak, stand, sneak, stand, sneak, stand. He can jump, and I, I wasn't midair, but basically, you understand what it does. It makes you do a bunch of land and little tasks. You do that, and then the floor opens, but you do not want to go through once the floor opens. Do not do that, because you will not get the talisman. You will just complete the normal game, which allows you to continue throughout the mirrorverse, but that's not what you want. You want the tiny dancer talisman. So, if you do that, and you complete the whole song, the whole dance, you will get the Tiny Dancer Talisman. Now you'll get a laser pointer, and you can either use a solver, like I have, and cheat your way through it using a mod, or you can point a laser at it, and it will show the block. Now, or you can just be lazy and use a mod solver, which I'm gonna do. Now, you do get checkpoints, uh, every little way through, but if you want the talisman, which is the reason you're watching this video, you cannot use any checkpoints. Once you reach the top, you'll be able to open up this chat if you didn't use any of the checkpoints, and you will get the miniaturized tubulator. Now, the next few talismans that I'm going to be talking about are in Stilgore, which is the final area for Vampire Slayer. If you kill Thralls or Feedlings here, you'll get Hemo Vibe. Or from Vampire Minions, which you need a bunch of Hemo Vibes and a Fat Person Helmet to craft. And those will possibly generate these. Now, in the Hemo Vibe collection, you can see that there's the Blood Donor Talisman. And at different amounts when you unlock them, you can get uh, the upgrades. Now this one needs Hemo Glass, which is grabbed with some Hemo Vibes. And the final one is a Blood Donor Artifact, which is from Hemo Bombs, which is from Hemo Glass. Now I don't have this collection, not a lot of people do since the Rift just came out a few weeks ago. But that is how you get all of the Blood Donor Talismans. The next is the Burma Gelled Garlic Flavored Reheated Gummy Polar Bear. That name is Sibilong, but how you did it at Vampire Slayer Level 3, you unlock the recipe, which you need nearly full eaten carrots, the back fragments from Fitting Back, which is a boss, which I will include in this video. Now, I'll be making a tutorial on how to defeat it soon, so watch out for that, but by the time you're at this point, you already know how to defeat it. You want to transfer in 16 reheated gummy polar bears, and now you'll need 8 blood badges, which, how do you get blood badges? You need uh, 64 coven seals, which are the base slayer drop for vampire slayer, backs and leash fragments, which you get from the leech and back fragment boss, obviously, and the Crux Motion, which you need one of each of the Cruxes from the mobs in all the areas. You make eight of those, and then you also need 16 nearly whole carrots, which you make from half-eaten carrots. How do you get half-eaten carrots? It's from Carrot Cave, which you get a horse Zucker from this guy at the plaza. And now most people won't have nearly a coherent fishing rod. But, if you use that, the rabbit will follow you instead of run away from you. This will be much easier to get a lot of carrots. But this does require a high amount of African carrot collection. Now, you just run around with your rabbit and get your carrots. 
Well, once you do that and you get everything, you should be able to craft your Prima Gelled Garlic Flavored Reheated Gummy Polar Bear. Vampiric Dentist Relic. The Vampiric Dentist Relic is crafted with eight blood badges and an unfanged vampire part. And you do need a Vampire Slayer 5 to craft. Now, the unfanged vampire part is a RNG drop. I think it's like around a 1 in 80 drop from tier 4 and tier 5 vampire slayers. So, you'll have to grind that a lot or just buy it off of the AA. Once you finally get that drop, just surrounded by blood badges and you get yourself a vampire dentist relic. I'm going to quickly show you guys how to do a vampire slayer tier 4 because that's the easiest one to get this with. And also, I can't do tier 5s. If you want to skip uh, to the next talisman, go here. Now, you want to get your slayer out in an open area. It's just easier to fight it in. Well, I'm going to choose right here. I'm going to kill the speed wind and this will start slayer. Now, I like doing it in F5. It's just, I find it easier. Now, whatever it does, the twin claws, I like to use the... Oh, I don't. I like to use the, uh, fully ice. Because I don't dodge it all the time. And it does a ton of damage. Now here, it will do its impel thing. And its mania thing. Which, impel basically makes you... It will action, like sneak, flick up, flick down. Yeah. And mania, of course, is just going around in the green area. Well, it will do a little bit of summons, which will take away your hearts from your thing. And you just gotta kill the little summons. Which I think there's a way to permanently get rid of them. I think using that at tier 5, they summon skulls. But you can really get rid of them. I'm not sure. I might be making up stuff. I haven't, I haven't successfully been able to do it tier 5 even. <laughs> ah. He does make a little thing here, which you gotta get or it'll kill you. Oh, and my vampire slayer was slain because it was able to get staked, which is when it's at 20% health, you're able to stake it. Now, I didn't get it. Of course, it's like a 1 in 80 chance. Of course, we get 1 in 80 chance, so I'm not gonna get it on recording. That'd be pretty insane if I did, but that's how you do a vampire slayer tier 4. The next items have to do with the Shen's Auction. Which every year, you get to bid on items. Every Skybook year, you get to bid on items with moats. Now, these three are the ones that we will need to uh, focus on. First is the Punchard Artifact. Basically, you just bid on it and you get it. If you bid enough. And the Rift Prism. You just get enough moats. And bid on it, and how I recommend getting moats is just kill the mobs beside the splatter. We'll give you melons if you craft them up into the next tier. They'll give you more moats when you sell to the moat scrubber. And just killing them gives you these amount of moats. That's how I recommend getting the most moats. And you just want to win two of these. Are uh, two of the Talisman's and also this one is transferable so you can always buy it on the gay age But I don't know if you guys have two billion coins to spend The next one is a little confusing it has to do dead cat food 
Now, if you transfer a dead cat food into the normal world, you get tasty cat food. Next, Diana has to be mayor. Next, you want to do the Diana event until you get the lynxes, and you want to feed your cat food to the to the slammy lynx. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, and you should get. And once you do that, you should get the pre-digested fish. With that pre-digested fish, of course, then just get the future calories talisman. Which is Rift Transferable. And, that, and that's basically how you get the future calories talisman. I know that was a little confusing, but hopefully you understood. The last item you'll, you're able to bid on in the Dark Auction which is the Hocus Pocus Cypher, which gives some rift time and some intelligence and mana in the rift. Now, if I did end up missing any talismans, look at the pinned comment, and it will tell you how to get it. If this video did help you out at all, you can like and subscribe, which will help out the channel a lot as YouTube boosts the videos with more engagement. Anyways, I'm gonna go work on my rift gear progression guide, which talks about all the armor, all the weapons and all the equipment that you'll need in the rift.